Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Well, this is great to see this many people here. Um, uh, you know, pre-COVID, we'd uh, this type of meeting, we'd have a hundred people. Um, I was uh, talking to some people and referencing that uh, last year's budget presentation, we only had one person attend the meeting, and they showed up late and left early. So uh, I'm very pleased to see we're getting more and more people as uh, hopefully COVID gets further behind us. Um, so uh, I have a presentation for you. Um, we're going to go through the whole thing, and towards the end, we're going to have a lot of uh, a session where you can do questions. Uh, Jessica is in the back here. Raise your hand. Jessica is our corporate secretary, and any ideas that come up, any comments that you make and so forth, she's going to document them. I'm not going to be able to document them over here. Um, we're going to use the same microphone. Uh, we are live streaming this, um, and we'll have it recorded also, so if uh, people can watch it right now or they can watch it later. So I'll hand the microphone off. You'll ask your question. That way everybody can hear it. They can hear it at home, uh, and then I'll respond. Uh, we're going to stick with the three-minute limit for board meetings. We, uh, we limit uh, members to uh, three minutes. So if you're, if you're thinking about making a comment, making a suggestion, usually if you can pare it down, you can get it all done in three minutes. All right. So. Draft, five-year strategic plan. What's the first word there? Draft. It means we're not done. We're still working on it. Okay? So let's talk about the process. Let's talk about how we put things together. Let's talk about what's included in the plan. And then comments at the, bottom, at the end. Okay. And if this thing's going to cooperate, please cooperate. Please cooperate, maybe. Do I have to turn it on? It's a great slide we got up there. It's just a great slide. Ah, oh, there we go. Is it going to work now? Oh, good. All right. It's now working. Okay, purpose. So what we're going to do is we're working on a five-year strategic plan that is going to commence at the beginning of 23, and will carry us all the way to 27. It's going to be a living document, meaning it's going to be changed as we go along. We're going to have to update it. We're going to have to add additional years. But here's the first five years um, in this plan. We're going to also talk about other key elements, not, uh, such as assessments, reserves, and key projects. And we're going to talk about what key projects, the definition of a key project. But this is going to be all-encompassing. Now, I've spoken with a lot of people over time, and they've talked to me about, well, back when I worked for this company, we did our strategic planning this way or that way. There's a hundred ways to do this. This is the way we adopted it. Okay, so that's the purpose. The next one is the background. So where is that couple that I was speaking with earlier? So you guys were at the focus group, um, which took place in November, December? October, okay. So last year, we sent out the survey to all our members, and we received 12,000 responses, which was outstanding, and gave us a basis to develop the five-year strategic plan. In addition to that, we had the focus groups. Now, the focus groups were much smaller, measured in hundreds, but we talked in much more detail. Where a survey, you can answer it in five minutes, you're done, click, you're done, submit. The focus groups, we spent about an hour and a half, and we talked about things in much more detail. So this information is the basis for the five-year plan. We, asked, we started with the membership. Give us your input. Now, the, uh, the report is available on our website. Okay, Go into the financial sections, it's financials and reports, and on the bottom it says special reports, and it'll be there. All right, so that's the background. Okay, assessments. Who here has voted? Has everybody voted? Good, good, good. Let's have all those hands up. If you haven't voted yet, please vote. Every vote counts. Okay, so we're talking about the three, uh, and we're not going to get into great detail on the assessments because that's really not what we're talking about. We're talking about the five-year strategic plan. Um, we do have more seats up front if you want to sit up front. 
Um, okay, so the, the current plan is a $3 increase. It would kick in on March 1st of 23. Um, if that were to fail, we would potentially go for another one in 24, 25, something to that nature. Um, the thought process is, as opposed to waiting 20 years between increases and having a large increase, let's have a more frequent but small bite size, $3. Uh, is a good example of that. And then 26, it would be for improved and unimproved. I know that's a little bit of a hot topic right now. Um, so that's what we're talking about assessments. Okay, reserves. So how much, what was our reserves look like a couple years ago when we had that little fire? Wasn't very good, was it? So we're heading in the right direction. We're in much better shape financially now, but we still have a ways to go. So we need to have reserves just in case something else comes our way down the road. Now, with a municipality, they have statutes and so forth. They tell you how much you have to have. But a POA, different thing. They really leave it open. So I sat down with our CFO and we talked about, and we're ta really talking about risk management here. And we're talking about what is covered by um, insurance, what is not covered by insurance, because a lot of things are covered by insurance. Um, and then we determined that we wanted to uh, go with a target of $3 million for the POA and then $1 million for water. So that would give us a total of four. Now, the water department's a little bit easier to get to because it's a lower number, uh, plus they have more in reserves. But the $3 million is going to take a couple years to get there. All right, But we're heading in that direction, and that's good. We want to have that reserve. All right. Now, one thing that was different is in the five-year strategic plan, people come to me and go, well, you talked about uh, renovating Reardon Hall. We're in Reardon Hall. And about the new member services building. Well, why didn't you stop right there? But remember, when you're developing a five-year strategic plan, it's not like it's a point in time where all of a sudden you magically, everything stops and you're able to add things. So this was approved by the board earlier this year so I'm mentioning it in the five-year plan, okay? But it's not, it's really taking place before because we're actually closing a week from now, all right? So, but we do need to mention it. So uh, Reardon Hall is gonna be completely renovated and the new member resources building, I keep on going, we're changing the name because we have member services and water billing and those are gonna be combined and together and we're calling it member resources. So if I accidentally call it member services, just to correct me, because it's now going to be called member resources. All right? So that, and that's going to be taking place. That building's going to be built down there. It's going to make it a lot easier for our members. So I just want to mention that. All right, key projects. Now, in developing a five-year plan, it's really easy to get caught up in the nitty-gritty and in the small stuff. In fact, it can be called all-consuming. You can run, you can just run out of effort if you try and include every single small thing that you have to purchase. Now we do those studies and so forth, but for this purpose, we're going to try and keep it as straightforward as possible. So we're going to talk about key projects. These are going to be the big projects, and we're not going to talk about smaller projects, uh, such as if we need to get a new truck for the Lake Rangers. I'm not going to include it in the five-year plan. It's important. It needs to be in the budget. But for the five-year plan, who cares? It's, such a, it's, it's small. Um, resurfacing of a parking lot, a, a range ball dispenser, so forth. So the five-year uh, strategic plan, this on the last line, it does not take the place of the annual budget. It is a companion document to the budget. Okay, That's the key. It's a companion document. It's not going to replace it. All right, now, here's another thing, costing. Boy, in this time of inflation, trying to estimate the cost of a project that's gonna take place five years from now, waste of your time. But what we do need to do is, we need to have to some sort of idea as to a range as to how much it's gonna cost. So I developed this system, one star is under $100,000, two from 100 to 250, 250 to 500, 500 to a million, 1 million to 2 million and over $2 million, okay? So it's gonna give us a broad brush, it's gonna give us a general idea, and as we get more specific, 
we'll know more as we get closer to the project. Because remember, for some of these projects, if it we're talking about a building, well, I can't get an estimate until I hire an architect. And then the architect, architect's going to have to talk to a contractor. We're going to go through all this effort for a project that's going to take five years from, take place five years from now. That's a monumental waste of time. But what we can do is we can give you a broad brush idea of how much it's going to cost. So that's the system we're going to use. All right, so now let's talk about some of the projects that have been included. Now, we could have broken these down. We could have broken these down by year, but instead we decided to break it down by subject matter, okay? Uh, so the first one is in 23, it'll be late 23, but Tanya Creek Practice Center. If you've been there, if you play golf, you know that because of the activity card, because of free range balls, we now do 65,000 buckets of balls at Tanyard Creek each year. It's a huge amount of usage down there, and it's, the building is no longer meeting our needs. We have a lot of problems with that building. If you look closely at that building, that building has been added on to at least two or three times and once you start cobbling together a building, it's not going to meet your needs. So that's the, one of the first items down. And what we're also talking about in your plan, you're going to see that what we may do is we don't want to go forward, we don't want to shorten the range, but we can definitely go backwards and take over some of that parking lot because that parking lot is no longer needed to be that big. Back in the day when we had 50 or 100 people trailering their carts in, we needed that huge parking lot, but now we get 10, five or 10 cars get trailered in. So we can capture, we can take some of that parking lot, go backwards, and it'll actually do a pretty good job. Um, Kingsdale uh, Pro Shop Renovation. Um, we're talking about carpeting, countertops, everything that you touch and feel, um, it needs work. It needs work, it's, it's, it's older and so forth. And it doesn't need to be that big. We're, and keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So if you think about it, look at our pro shop at the country club. It's large and it does the most amount of business. And then all the other pro shops are kind of satellite pro shops. Kingsdale, uh, I'm sorry, Metfield and Highlands are kind of smaller and they're meeting our needs. It's perfect. Scottsdale is a little smaller. Perfect. That's about the size that this one needs to be. Maybe a little bit more since it's 27 holes, but not much more. And we can capture that space and use it in another, another way. At the Tanya Creek Practice Center, that's where we want to have a larger display room and so forth, because that's where we do the bulk of our club sales. So if we're going to have a large pro shop facility, it needs to be at the Country Club, of course, and Tanya Creek. And then Metfield, that pro shop needs to be renovated also, but you'll notice we're looking all the way down at 25, 2025. All right, golf maintenance. Um, the first one is a new uh, heavy equipment and golf maintenance facility. So up on Arcmo, if you drive through Arcmo on the northern side of the road, you'll see a barn that's way removed, like three football fields removed from the road. Okay? That barn is where we store all of our heavy equipment that we use rarely, meaning like airification uh, equipment for the golf course. We only use those about two or three times a year. Uh, for our streets department, stuff like that, that we only use occasionally, we need to keep it in a good, safe manner. We need to make sure that we preserve it uh, because we use it regularly, but just on an annual basis. Well, at some point, since the POA no longer, no longer owns that land, we're gonna have to build a new facility. We may do that over at Metfield, and if you go into that, golf, into that golf maintenance shop down at Metfield, it's pretty bad. So we could potentially combine those projects, have a storage facility, and fix the, fix the uh, building problems. And I'm talking about when we have a rainstorm, the employee break room floods. Not like a little bit, like an inch. It's bad. So we need to solve that problem. Country Club Master Plan. So who here remembers when we just, uh, uh, presented the master plan? This was back in 2018. So it's a complete renovation. A lot of our golf courses are getting old. 
the fairways need work, the irrigation systems need work. Um, if you've played golf and you've seen uh, how we um, um, sprigged uh, nine holes at uh, Scottsdale, that has been a huge success. Well, we need to start doing that for all of our golf courses. They're getting old, and if we don't take care of them, they're going to deteriorate. So this would be a major. That's a, there's a lot of stars after that. You're talking about three, four million dollar project. It's going to be a huge project, but we got to make sure that happens. And what we're going to do is we're going to also use the flood study that was done in 17 and make sure that we try and mitigate the damage. So I was meeting with a property owner earlier today, and they were talking about flooding. And I'll say, and I would say, look, we can't stop the flooding. The golf courses were intentionally built in a floodway because Cooper couldn't sell homes because <laughs> you can't build a home in a flood, flood zone. But we can make sure that we try and survive them and get, and get uh, through them through using riprap or gabion baskets or raising the irrigation uh, controllers on pedestals. That's a really good example. So those little irrigation controllers cost like $10,000 a piece and they're easily damaged in a flood. And you'll notice now they're all raised on pedestals. That gives them above the flood. If you go next, if you drive by the bathroom, if, you're, if you go by the um, city hall and you're going uh, south on the highway and you see that bathroom immediately to the right, you'll notice that the, that the air conditioning units and so forth are raised up. They're high. They're not on the ground like you normally see them. They're raised up because we're trying to make sure that if we have a flood and it goes above that line, that we don't lose that equipment. So all those things have, have made it so that we get through floods. Remember a couple years ago, we'd be closed for two weeks when we had a flood on one of the golf courses. Now we're closed two or three days. We're doing a lot better. We just gotta hope we don't have a major flood that really proves me wrong. Okay, recreation, tiny cabins. So who's here been to, been to um, Blowing Springs and seen the new tiny cabins? Those are pretty cool. Hopefully you're not claustrophobic because if you are, you don't want to stay in one of those places because they live up to their name, tiny cabins. So right now uh, we have the original one, then we added three, and we added that service area, that one at the very end that's a service one. That's We have washer, dryer in there, and all that stuff that you need to maintain. We have space for two additional. We even have the concrete pads there. If you're going to pour concrete, might as well pour them all at one time, even though we're not going to put them in just yet. So those have been financially very well. They've been doing really good, so get two more of those. Uh, Tanyard Creek parking lot. So this one's really caused me some angst on this one. Because constantly when you go to Tanya Creek, and I'm talking about the trail area where you park, where it's right next to the, uh, to the highway, is the parking lot is never of a sufficient size. But if we increase the size of the parking lot, are we going to overload the trail? Oh, my God. It's not an easy question to answer, to uh, address. But we think that we need to increase the size of it a little bit. I get a pretty regular call from the people that live down there, and they're usually not happy with me after a busy weekend because people park everywhere they shouldn't. All right, Metfield Fitness. Who here has used the Metfield Fitness Center? Not big, is it? Not very big. Um, it is our smallest location. It's not bad, but it's very small. So I mentioned earlier, one of the projects that we're doing is we're relocating the member resources building down here. Okay, that will then allow us to move out of Metfield member services location, and that will allow us to increase the Metfield fitness by about 40%. Better, it doesn't completely solve the problem, but it improves the problem. Okay? And then tennis. So what we've been doing is we've been trying to do two courts at a time. We did the, our first two in uh, 2018, and that's a complete rebuild because these are really old courts that have really thick cracks that you can trip over. So we did two in 18. We're doing two more this year, so that means we have four more to go. And they're not cheap at all. Two stars, and it's on the high end of that range. All right, recreation. Pickleball. Who here plays pickleball? 
a pretty decent number. Very good, very good. So right now we have six courts at uh, Branchwood. We have four courts under construction at Metfield, and they're going to be oriented the correct direction. Remember, they used to be oriented where you hit the ball and you look straight up into the sun. Um, but now they're going to be oriented the correct direction. We'll have four. And with the renovation of uh, Reardon Hall, we're going to have two indoor courts. Okay, so during the wintertime when it's really cold and so forth and it's raining, you'll be able to play here. Um, so that's really good. But I'm thinking by 25, we're going to need more courts, probably four more courts. Uh, and at Metfield, we have quite a bit of space. Uh, Reardon Playground, uh, that playground is not in the best of shape. Um, so we'll need to renovate that once again. That's two stars. Playground, two stars? It's, they're, it's not cheap. The playground, four years ago, we did the playground out at Metfield, and that was $100,000. It is not cheap to do a playground. Tennis, we, uh, we referenced those earlier, so this will complete. By 26, we'll have all the tennis courts done. Yay, that's a good thing. Splash pad, uh, this would be at Metfield Park. This was one of the items that kept on coming up uh, in, the, in the customer service, in the member service survey, member survey. Uh, it came up over and over again, having a splash pad. And then the big daddy in 27 would be a centrally located indoor pool. We would potentially put that somewhere close here. We have the large parking lot, so forth. This would make sense. If we're going to do a big, if we're going to do another indoor pool, it makes sense to go big and have it centrally located. But you're looking at at least $10 million for that. So right now, we've We've borrowed two and a half million dollars to do this building and the member resources building. So what my thought process is, is by 27, we have this loan paid off and we enter it into a new loan for that because there's no way we'll be able to do that on our own. That's how it's going to be a large expense, but it's going to be much needed. All right, food and beverage. So Kingsdale restaurant. Um, so. Papa Mike's has been at Kingsdale for years, 16, 17 years, okay? But he's retiring next year, and the lease expires at the, end of, at the beginning of October of next year. So at that time, we would take that over, renovate it. It's, it's, in, uh, it's older now, um, and maybe we'd go with a barbecue place, maybe something else, I don't know. We've, got, we've been fielding a lot of different suggestions, um, but we would pair that at the same time that we renovate that restaurant we renovate the Kingsdale Pro Shop. Makes sense to do both at the same time. We're in the same building, makes sense to do that. And at that time, what we could potentially do is take a portion of that really large Pro Shop and convert that into restaurant space. Because if you've been to Papa Mike's on busy Friday or Saturday, you know they run out of space very quickly. So if we can capture that square footage, that would be very wise. Metfield. We keep on getting a lot of people asking for a, a restaurant at, on the east side. Now, what we, what we did was, on the west side, we opened up the bar at Highlands, Highlands Pub and Patio first. And if you've talked to me at all of the time, you know that I very much believe in the crawl, walk, run philosophy when it comes to a restaurant. And at Highlands, we started crawling by with the, with the bar, and the bar was very successful. And now we're walking. We, have, we now have... Uh, pizza, but it's a very limited menu. We know that we need to expand that menu, but uh, we're not ready to do that yet. Same philosophy as what we would do at Highlands. Go from bar and then onward. But keep in mind, the key difference between Highlands and Metfield is we don't have a kitchen. We don't have a kitchen. And what's the most important part of the kitchen is the hood. And that takes a huge amount of space, is expensive to install. So to do, to do a full restaurant there will require an addition, okay? Or we got to do something with the recreation or the fitness and move that somewhere else. So that's going to be a hard decision, but we have to 25. And then Lake Point. We've been talking about having a uh, Lake Point lakeside dock. So if you're looking out on your, you're having, you're eating dinner and you look out, you see the, see the, uh, the lake and then see down below, you have the gazebo and off to the right, we could pull, build a nice dock. 
And what you'll notice is that then gives us four concepts at one location. Restaurant, wine bar, event center, and then lakeside dock. And when you have four different concepts, that's four different types of customers that you're drawing in. And that's, gonna, that's really good. So that's one thing that we're looking at. All right. Lakes and RV storage. So the Lake Ann Spillway. So this can be a little bit confusing. People have probably heard if they've uh, attended or watched any of the Lakes Committee meetings, they'll see that we've talked about the Lake Ann sinkhole and then we've talked about the spillway. Two separate problems. The sinkhole has been solved. We've completely filled that. It's rectified. Now, that was not on the dam. It was off the dam. It was close to the dam. We've solved that problem. So that was talked a lot about at a lot of the Lakes Committee meetings. But the next thing is the spillway. It's old and it's in bad shape. Go on a hike. Go take a look at the spillway. And you look at all the cracks and everything in the concrete. That's not good for a spillway. That's going to take some time. It's going to be costly. Next thing. Okay, who here fishes? Raise your hand. All right, we got a couple. Where do the fish come from? Do they magically appear in the lakes? No, no. We got to put them in there. So right under Loch Lomond, right now we're building two, two um, fish aquaculture ponds. Okay, and that we're, we're going to raise our own fish right there. It's going to be kind of an experiment. We feel very confident. If you talk to Rick Eccles, he's a little bit tired of putting the fish in the ponds at Burksdale, and then we have a flood and all the fish go away, and he's despondent for a week. Um, here at uh, Loch Lomond, it's off the dam, uh, far enough, and we're going to put in additional, I think that should say three, not two, aquaculture ponds. We have two. Oh, yeah, two, and then add three more. Okay, I did get it right. All right, Loch Lomond, we have problems with that spillway. Not nearly to the extent of Lake Anne, but still an issue. It's going to cost some money to repair. And I'm not talking about that the dam's going to fail. Oh, my God. No, no. It just needs to be regular maintenance. Lake Windsor Paving, if you've driven down there, you know it needs to be replaced. But that's a big area. All right, Lake Anne uh, Dam Paving. Uh, Lake Norwood Dam Paving, uh, and then we need to repave uh, the RV storage area. So a lot of paving. I said earlier that I wasn't going to reference paving, but these are large, significant projects, so that's why I included key projects. All right. So here are the totals. So if you see, so what we did was I added up all the all the dollar signs. Now keep in mind in 27, the dollar sign for recreation is six, but it's probably a lot more than that because that's a big ticket item. But you'll see that it's fairly balanced, but you'll also notice that it's lower in 23. There's two reasons for that. First of all, we're still working on Rudin Hall and member resources at that time. Okay, but second of all, too many five-year strategic plans that I've seen, they front end load it. Oh, we want to do this. 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 So it becomes a Christmas wish list, and the first one or two years gets loaded up, and then they realize, oh, God, we can't pay for this all. So, oh, we'll do that project and that project next year. And they get to the next year, and they can't do it, and then they can't do it. And then the five-year plan starts collecting dust on the, on the shelf. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be reasonable in the first few years. I did not want to front-end load it because front-end loading it will make it fail. All right, now we're going to talk about something different. So also part of this whole exercise, what are we going to do about Burksdale South? Okay, now at some point we're going to come up with a better name than Burksdale South. That's the working title. All right, so a couple different things. And uh, for those who haven't been watching the board meetings, they may not be aware of all the things that are going on. So let's look at the top, very top, and you'll see the Little Sugar Creek Park, okay? And you have the yellow trail up there, okay? So they're working on that right now. The Walton Family Foundation, Trailblazers, they're putting in that trail. It's going to be a half-mile trail. It's going to be called Bluebird. 
This is the Bluebird Trail, um, and it'll be really flat. It'll be perfect for walking, biking, and all that stuff. In addition to that, they're going to be putting in um, a playground, uh, picnic areas, covered picnic areas, um, and they're going to be put, putting in a uh, tunnel, because who's driven by that uh, crosswalk where bikes go across there? And people come down uh, Reardon Road way too fast. So they're going to put in a tunnel. So all that's happening right now um, up on the northern end. Okay. Now let's talk about the southernmost end. Down here by Allen's and you have Mercy Bridge. And so if anybody's been on the Razorback Greenway, they know that it terminates just before Mercy Bridge. Now an offshoot goes up to the side, to the east, and then goes up through Blowing Springs all the way to Met Field Park, but this portion stops right here, and that bridge is going to be a five-lane bridge, and one of them is going to be dedicated to bikes. Okay? And then about two months ago, the board voted, see where that purple line is, to extend the Razorback Greenway all the way up to the park up there. Okay? So that's going to go along. Now, this is conceptual. So um, I had a, some of the bird watching clubs come after me and say, oh my God, we're going to, we got to relocate. Up to, wait, this is conceptual. We'll, we'll make it work. Don't worry. But we're going to go along there. So that leaves a large area of land that's highlighted in kind of the limey green. And we're going to call that Brooksdale South. So if you check your email, you will receive will receive either today or tomorrow a questionnaire, okay, a survey monkey question saying, what should we do with this land? Okay, and we describe this is what's going on with the park up here, this is what's going on down here. Now beware a couple other th things. This land is in a flood zone. You don't really want to build a building there. If you do, it's going to cost some money because you got to raise it up high enough. The other thing is there's a deed restriction on that land. And that deed restriction says it's got to be used for recreational purposes. Okay? So we can't put in a shopping mall or something to that nature. So I've included all that information into the email, into the survey, so you can make an informed decision, an informed suggestion. Now, it's going to be a two-step process. The first step is, so the questionnaire you're going to see is two questions. That's it. Are you a member? If you answer no, it kicks you out. Okay, and we're only sending it to members. Okay, and by using SurveyMonkey, you can't share that because it's actually tagged to your email address, and that email address came from our member member resources department. All right. Uh, the second question is: We're going to give you blank space, and you get to write what you think needs to be done there. What do we want to do? And you'll notice that I don't give any suggestions. I'm not going to give you any examples right now because I don't want anybody to say, oh, Tom's talked about this. We should do that. Yes, let's do that. I'm not going to give you any suggestions. You give me what should we do there. So that'll be part one. That'll be the first survey. Then we're going to take all that information. We're going to combine it together. And at that point, Jessica, Jessica remember Jessica back here, wave your hand. She's going to start hating me because she's, got, she's the one that gets to go through all that together. And she's got to collate it all together. And we're going to create probably a top 10 or a top 20 list. Of, okay, this is what we saw over and over again. This was the number one and so forth. And we're going to then send it out to the membership and say, rank it. What's most important? So it's going to take us some months, but we want to get that. Boil down the information. And it may not be just one thing. We may be able to do two, three, four things. Mixed use is a good thing. Mixed use. If we can get, take care of multiple people in the same location, outstanding. Okay? So that's what we're working on. Check your email and fill it out. We limit the number of characters because I don't want anybody giving me this. Jessica will hate me that much more. So we're going to limit you. Okay? So be efficient. Tell us boom, 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 boom. Do this, do this, do this. All right. All right. Now, at the very beginning of this presentation, we talked about the survey and we talked about the focus groups. And what was of, of particular interest to me 
And going through the survey was the items that the membership ranked as the most important. And you'll notice that we used this as much as we could, and this is available on that report. So go onto our website, read through the report, but you'll see that a lot of these items we were able to address in the five-year plan, and that's what we tried to do. So indoor pool, it's included, 2026. Additional restaurants, it's included. Now, what was interesting is we got a lot of comments of we need to open up a restaurant at Highlands, and we were right in the middle of doing that, so yay, we already got that accomplished. But also, um, they want m more at uh, um, Metfield and so forth. So that's included. More trails, okay? So what, in particular, more walking trails, more concrete walking trails. And so if we go back real quick, you'll see that entire stretch is a concrete walking trail, and that's what was most important. The community kind of as a whole in the survey was like, maybe we need to put a pause on soft surface trails, but concrete walking trails that are flat, bring it on. All right, um, Metfield Mini Golf. Eh. If we're gonna build it, let's have it centrally located. Build it big, centrally located. So we're gonna, right now we're gonna stick with the Reardon course. Um, Playgrounds uh, included in 25, extended pool, pool hours. We did some of that this year, but boy, we had a trouble with hire, hiring people. We absolutely struggled, so our intention was to add hours this year, and we couldn't get the help. If you drive around, you know, you drive by City Hall, you see the big sign that says, Help Wanted. You go into Bentonville, Rogers, Springdale, there's Help Wanted signs everywhere. We, are, we have been short labor all year long, all year long. Um, I've told the story to a couple people. I ran into this couple, we were at Highlands and they were like, boy, it's a busy day. We should have a second bartender. I'm like, uh-huh, I know. You wanna work? Because we need it. Um, coffee bar at Blowing Springs. You know, we're really doing well with the, with the beer garden, uh, the gear garden, but it's a beer garden. Um, for right now, I think that's a good concept to stick with. Uh, I'm not convinced that coffee shop will do uh, well that far back. Uh, disc golf, uh, right now, Branchwood, you know, we're doing really well. It's active and so forth. I'm not certain where a uh, second one will uh, continue to do great. Uh, Jessica, didn't we hear that uh, uh, the disc golf course is ranked number five in the state? That's five out of... 163 courses and our course is rated five. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I've never used it before, but it's there. 24-hour um, fitness and 24-hour uh, access to the fitness center. Don't personally know why you want to come here at 2 o'clock in the morning, but you'll be able to do that. Uh, we'll have camera and so forth, so you know, no mischief will take place. Uh, so that'll be part of the Reardon renovation. Splash pad, that's included in 26 early and late classes, that's going to be a programming issue. And we've already talked to Joan about expanding our programming as we get into the new building. Indoor gymnasium, we've somewhat accomplished that with, you know, we talked about having the pickleball courts in some indoors. But I really think what they're talking about when they say indoor uh, in a gymnasium, they're talking about indoor basketball court. And unfortunately, this roof is not tall enough. It doesn't go up high enough. I think it's 18 feet, needs to be 26, 24, something like that. It's, can you imagine getting a bunch of kids in here with basketballs? Yeah, they're going for those ceiling tiles. It's not going to work. Um, and, and, you know, trying to raise the roof, that won't work either. Um, movies at Reardon, that's going to be a programming one. Uh, golf training facility, that was included in 23. Archery. Boy, I want to do an archery center. We don't have the land. I've tried to acquire some land near the gun range from Cooper. They told, turned me down. We've looked at a couple different places. We looked at Chelsea and Tudor, but it was, it's too close to other to, to homes and so forth because you've got to be prepared not only if that person wants to shoot this way, that they go that way, and we're too, too close. So um, I can't find a location. I can't with enough space. May it make sense? 
the shooting range. We um, open up G county GIS. We we're very landlocked, very landlocked. It is the shooting range, and that's it. There's no additional space to the side. So, okay, so these, once again, these were in the comments section of the survey and received a huge amount of participation, and these really re highlighted a lot of the key items. And I used this as kind of my guiding light when we were working through the five-year strategic plan to make sure we accomplished as many of these as possible. Okay? And I think we did. All right. So, tomorrow, you're going to get a second survey, because one is not enough. We're going to get a second one. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask you, what do you think about the five-year strategic plan? Remember, when we started this meeting, what was the very first word of the very first slide? Draft. Okay? So it's not set in stone. We want to get your input. So we started with member input at the very beginning. We took that input, we developed the plan. Now we want your input before we finalize it. Okay? My experience is if I go to the membership with a blank piece of paper, I'm walking away with a blank piece of paper. You don't have a blank piece of paper. Take that survey, take the five-year strategic plan, tell, me, tell us what you like about the plan, and tell us what we missed on the plan. Hey, I think we need to do more of this. I think we need to do more of that. We're spending way too much money on this. Oh, I don't like this project. I like this project. What about this? Okay? And remember, I'm not using any specifics here because I don't want to place any seeds in any mines. Okay? So give us some. So tomorrow afternoon, you're going to get that survey. We sent out the first survey, the, uh, the Ber uh, Berksdale South survey today. And Survey Mon Monkey only allows you to send out 20,000 surveys one 24-hour period. So we have to wait till tomorrow to get this out. So that's how I'm going to have you give us this, give us uh, the information. We value it. We want to make sure: are we on target? Do we get it right? Do we miss? So far. All right. Now we're to questions. Your four million dollar reserve. What percent of your annual revenue is that? Um, POA, POA and golf, POA and water combined, thirty six million dollars. It's uh, our budget is available on our website. If you have not gone to our website recently, please do so. We have a huge amount of information available. We have audited financials going back to '06. Um, we have budgets and everything. So. Yep. Uh, did I answer your question? Next one. Yes, my name is Wendell Stevens. I've been here since 04. And I can't understand why we're not taking care of our lakes like we used to. You're putting too many predators in there, so they're eating all the smaller fish. You put trout in the Brittany, the bass are eating the trout. That's what he's talking about, and they're not cheap. And then you're bringing all these playgrounds in and all this. Who's going to maintain these? I understand the Walton Foundation is going to maintain the trails and that for three years, and then after that, it's up to us. So how are we going to pay for this? Because nothing in here is going for cash, and the, this is turning into a younger town I don't see any plans or anything. This I know this doesn't have nothing to the POA, but the schools. You got one elementary school. You're going to have to have a middle school, probably pretty soon a high school. I mean, I just look at the population changing over. And everything before was you had to be a member to do it. Now it's everybody coming in from outside that don't, don't have a lot or nothing like that. It don't make, I don't understand. Why are we paying for all this? And not, to me, not giving hardly anything in return. Okay, so you covered about four items. So if I miss anything, please forgive me. So first of all, uh, schools, you said this, not us. 
but the uh, county school district purchased a bunch of land off of County 40, so I think that's where it's going, but don't quote me because I'm not in the school business. Um, uh, fish, I, I, what I would encourage you to do, if you're concerned about our fish, so forth, come to the Lakes Committee, maybe even volunteer for the Lakes Committee, ask those questions of Rick Eccles. Rick Eccles is like a mad scientist when it comes to fish. Hold on, let me keep, you know. He's gonna be a lot more knowledgeable than I am. I have caught this many fish in my lifetime, so I am not the person to, to quote, but come to the Lakes Committee. It's a very good committee. Um, uh, uh, trails and so forth. Uh, so the city and the POA have partnered with regards to the trail, the trails, okay? We both contribute $70,000 a year, okay? So that gives us a budget of $140,000 a year, which is doing just fine. We're doing great. Now, what's interesting, so here's pop quiz. Everybody ready for a pop quiz? Okay. So by design, every single amenity is subsidized. Okay? By design. Okay? If we, if we didn't subsidize the golf courses, we wouldn't have seven. Okay? If we didn't subsidize the fitness centers, we wouldn't have three, and so forth. But there's one amenity that we do not subsidize. Anybody know what that amenity is? Blowing Springs. You go to Blowing Springs on the weekend and look at all the license plates from out of town and so forth. So that money that's coming in are people going to Blowing Springs, they're bringing their RV, they're staying, they're primitive camping, they're sleeping on the ground. I don't know why you do that in the first place, but, um, and they're going into the tiny cabins. So all that revenue is coming in. So guess where all $70,000 of the trails maintenance, guess what department we charge that to? Blowing Springs, and we're still profitable, okay? And the gear garden, that's bringing in money. So. Yes, over time, will the trails cost us more? I'm sure they will. Everything is going up. But I think we're going to do pretty good. Um, I think I covered everything. All right. Oop. Um, thanks for all of this. I thought in the focus groups that a bunch of us asked about an east side dog park, and I don't see that here. Similar... Okay, so, there's one idea. Uh, didn't come from me. Um, land. I want to put an east side dog party. I completely agree. I got multiple dogs of my own. Um, land. And on top, so we need land. We need to make sure that the land is not too close to homes because if I put in a dog park, near a home, they're going to sue the POA and win. Okay, So land and accessibility. I've looked at a couple different locations and every single one fails. It's almost like the archery. It's like, oh, come on. I get, you know, we, we have this need. I completely agree. No. And I don't want to spend, the POA doesn't want to spend a whole gob full of money to buy land. So I agree with the idea. Can't find a good spot that makes sense without getting sued. Yes, ma'am. How about Burksdale South and put in a dog agility park there also? Well, I think you, you're ready for the survey. You're ready to go. I'm not going to make any comments because I don't want anybody to think I'm swaying the group one way or the other. On the uh, development of Burksdale South, the walking trail, I, I think I've heard on the board meetings an uh, additional parking lot. I didn't see that on the, well, the because I, I'd have to travel that road daily, and people will park on the shoulder to, if there's not adequate par parking, it's going like Canyon Creek. <laughs> so, so I hope it's big enough. Um, so I failed to mention that we are adding a parking lot up there. I, I mentioned all the amenities. Um, up in this upper section, I think we have a pointer. Ooh, no, 
I probably just messed everything. No. So in the upper section where the yellow is, we're adding a parking lot. I'm concerned about whether it's going to be big enough. I'm very concerned about it because I think, uh, I think that's going to be an issue. Um, hey, Paul. 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 One voice. Thanks, buddy. And you can approach me after the meeting. Okay. Um, but I'm concerned about parking also because I don't want to, up. you know, right now, if you go to Cunningham Corner on the weekend in the morning, well, they're not going to Gasano's. They're going across and they're walking. And that, at some point, that's going to become an issue. Could you explain what's been accomplished or what is to be accomplished with the water department? He asked about the water department. So I intentionally excluded the water department because it's just so exciting all the pipes in the ground everything so uh, I agree I'm being facetious no all right um, by state regulation we're required to have a five-year plan they're actually it's in the budget they're doing it now okay so I didn't include that because it's, it's most people are not that interested but we are absolutely funding the water department on a consistent basis, because we know how important that is to our membership. Okay? So, and that information will be available on our website when it's done. Okay? Next. I will hang out as long as you want me to. Come ask me questions. Fill out the two surveys. Um, the Burksdale South survey, make sure you fill that out. Make sure you fill out this survey. We want your input. Remember, the first word in this presentation was draft. It's not finalized. We want to hear what you say. And if you have not yet voted, please do so. Thank you all. I really appreciate your time.